In this tutorial, we'll be looking at variables in Scratch. We're not going to create any variables this time around. We're actually going to look at pre-existing variables that the Scratch environment provides for us. By default, when I create a, a new project, I start off with the motion menu open. And so I'll look at the variables that are here. If you've looked at other tutorials or if you have some experience with variables, you might recall that one of the things that makes variables easy to identify is the fact that they have these checkboxes that allows you to monitor them in the stage area. So in this case, I've got X position, Y position, and direction. And those are for this particular sprite. So each sprite has its own X position, has its own Y position, and has its own direction, which is the direction that it's facing. So this sprite is currently at the X coordinates 0, 0, and it's facing 90, which is to the right. If I drag this sprite to a new location, notice that if I drag it over to the left, the X coordinate has gotten more and more negative. If I drag it to the bottom of the screen, the Y coordinate gets more and more negative. If I go up to the top right, they're both positive, back to about the middle, and I close in on zero. Now, dragging this around is not the only way to change these values. Most variables have a way to change them. Variables in general have a set command. So if I just create a quick variable called user age, there is a set command that goes with user age that lets me change its value. So similarly, I'm just going to get rid of that now. I don't actually want that variable. But notice I have a set x to 0. If I drag the cat off to the side, double click on that, it changes the, the position back to x equals 0. Doesn't affect the y position. If I want to change the y position, I have to bring in the set y to 0. And now I'm back to 0, 0. I can also change the direction. It's not quite as clear as I'd like it to be. I wish it said set direction, but instead it says point in direction. So if I say point in direction 0, that should be straight up or facing north. And to return it to its original position, it was pointing 90, and that's to the right. So those are some variables that we have available in the motion menu. I'm going to stop looking at all of those. In the looks menu, we have a couple of variables. One's called costume, the costume number of the sprite. One's called size, which is a percentage. So right now, the sprite is 100%. And I could set its size to be something larger. So how about 200%? That should double the size of my sprite. Or something smaller, 50%, and it should now be half size. So again, useful depending on what it is that you're doing in your project. That might be useful for you. Not a focus of what we're looking at right now. Nothing under sound that we really want to look at. We've got volume, which is the volume of the audio that we're playing. Tempo would be the speed of the probably drum beats and other um, rhythmic type sounds that you can make. There's nothing under pen. There's nothing under control. None of these things have variables. Under sensing, we actually have what is probably the most important variable that's built into Scratch. The other ones are very useful, but the single most important variable for regular programming is going to be this answer variable. Don't get me wrong, the other variables are important. But this is one that we have to pay particular attention to. Whenever I ask a question in Scratch, which is the way that I get the user to provide me some input, that value, that answer, is going to be saved in this variable called answer. This is a temporary variable. And the reason I say it's temporary is because there's only one of them. So if I ask this question and wait, I answer something simple like Bob. The answer that I just gave to my question should be stored here. And if I put this answer on the stage, you can see there is the answer to the question I gave, Bob. The problem with this, or it's not a problem, but it is something you need to be aware of. If I ask Bob their age now, so what is your age? And Bob gives me the answer 16. Well, answer just changed from Bob to 16. So I've essentially lost the previous answer that Bob gave me. I'm going to deal with this in another tutorial, dealing with input and output. But I want to point out to you for now, just talking about the variables that are built into Scratch, that the answer variable, although very useful, it can only be used one answer at a time. 
So that limits its usefulness and we have to work our way around that. And that gets into the use of other variables is one of the reasons why we create variables. There's another very useful variable on this menu, under the sensing menu, and that's the timer variable. Because the timer actually shows you the time that has elapsed since you started running this particular uh, world, since you created this world. So you can see in this case it's been 445 seconds since I created this new project. If I created another project, I'm just going to go project, new, I'm not going to save the current project, everything's been erased and I look at timer, timer is back to zero again. I can also reset the timer back to zero, maybe I'm using it for some other purpose. If I double click on reset timer, it gets set back to zero and I can do that as many times as I need to within a program. And I believe that's it for variables that I want to discuss in this tutorial. One of the other tutorials we'll be going over is how do we change those variables and how do we perform calculations with them. That's under the operators menu. And previous tutorials involve the variables menu, making variables and the things you can do with them. So that's it for this tutorial. Look out for those other ones and uh, have fun playing with Scratch.